Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pen Habit. My name's Matt Armstrong. I'm glad to have you here for another pen review video. Now, before we get started on the review, a quick thank you to this video's sponsor, Gold Spot Pens. You can find them at goldspot.com. They provided the pen for today's review free of charge. Uh, no further compensation was provided, and it was provided in exchange for an honest review. So you can find this pen and uh, many others at goldspot.com. Thank you to them for providing the pen for review purposes today. Now, this is a pen that I have gotten a lot of requests about. It's gotten a lot of attention, um, but not as much as I thought it it. it, it should have gotten. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about it. Today's review is for the Pelican Stola 3. This is a an entry-level um, pen from Pelican. It's priced to compete very, very much, very much in the same range as the Lamy Safari or the Faber-Castell Loom. So it's in that $35 to $40 range. Um, and it, it's an interesting design. So let's let's dive into it a little bit. So here you've got the packaging. It just comes in the standard Pelican white sleeve here. You pull that out and you've got a gray cardboard box with flip top lid here. Inside it comes with a long ink cartridge and the pen, which is wrapped in so this cello wrap here. Uh, pull this out. comes in the little plastic cello bag. And um, then we've got the little cardboard tab that says Stola 3, P16, silver mat. Um, and no, that's not me. It's it's uh, the, the U.S. or the English equivalent of M-A-T-T-E. Um, so, or it's the German equivalent of M-A-T-T-E, I would assume. Uh, this is the pen. So this is the Pelican Stola 3. Now, there are there have been a couple of other versions of the Pelican Stola previously. I've never seen them. I've never used them. They were never brought into the U.S. before. So this is the first one of the Stola line that was brought into the U.S. And this is the, the three. Um, the way I put it in the written version of this review is I feel like this is an entry-level pen for grown-ups. Um, one of my complaints about a lot of the entry-level pens, especially the ones in the that come from Europe as opposed to the the entry level pens that come from China or India is that a lot of the European entry level pens are really intended for school children because you know in Germany in particular they still use fountain pens to teach their kids how to write by hand uh, that's not something they do in the rest of the world so if you're looking for an inexpensive professional kind of understated modern looking pen um, a lot of the, the candy-colored Lamy Safaris are all-stars, the really bright caps on some of the Faber-Castell looms, the, you know, the pop colors of the Pilot Metropolitan. These, they're a little bit less professional, and I, I'm going to use that term very much in air quotes because you know me. You know I like colors. You know I like flashy pens. I don't care about understated pens all that much. But this is one where if you wanted to have a nice pen that had a modern look to it but wasn't too flashy, didn't have that corrective triangular grip that you get on a Lamy, this is a really nice option. It is, uh, it is a, a pretty understated, clean-lined pen. Uh, you've got the Pelican logo that is... Uh, stamped on the top here. Uh, this clip is really interesting. So it's a piece of of uh, stamped metal that has been shaped and it kind of wraps around the top of the clip and, and goes into a slot that's cut in here inside above the fin or below the finial rather. Comes down this really nice swooping design. The clip is stronger than you'd expect. It's actually probably my favorite design element of the pen and what keeps this from being completely boring because otherwise this would be one heck of a boring pen to look at. I like this clip quite a bit and it gives it a little bit of design flair. The rest of the pen is almost perfectly cylindrical. It kind of tapers down a little bit toward the end here. You've got a black plastic finial on the end and then there's a pelican text right between the cap and the barrel. It is a pull top pen and underneath the cap, you've got a black plastic section here. Um, it's very, very slick, highly polished plastic. And then the section um, unscrews and it will hold converters or long 
or short cartridges. Uh, the one downside to this pen is it does not come with a converter. I just don't get that. I don't get it. Lamy does it in this price range. Faber-Castell does it in this price range. I don't understand it. Converters are cheap. Spend the pennies. Put a converter in your pen. Anyway, uh, fortunately, this does take standard international cartridges and converters. So if you've got more than a couple fountain pens, you probably already have a converter that will work just fine in this pen. Um, I am using not the included converter, or not the included cartridge, but a, uh, a cartridge that I had sitting around of the of Pelican's Amethyst ink, the, which was the 2015 ink of the year. Um, really nice polished finish. I, I do like this silver. I'm not sure entirely why they call it matte silver. Um, it's really not. It's actually pretty... It's not, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's not glossy per se, but it is, this is a lacquer. It's not a, you know, it, it's not rough at all. There's no texture to it. It's, it's been, it's been glossed, glossed over quite a bit. So it's not really what I would consider a matte finish, but that's getting a little picky. Um, this is, you'll notice how thin the walls of the cap are. This pen has clearly been, it's drawn metal. Um, as opposed to being machined metal. So that means they take a flat sheet and stamp it into a progressively, you know, a, a progressive set of dies to stretch the metal out. So it's very thin, which means it's much lighter than you'd expect for a metal bodied pen. Um, but as an, a, a metal bodied pen, probably brass is what I'm guessing, um, possibly aluminum, but probably brass, uh, this really can't be used as an eyedropper. So, let's, uh, that's kind of the design. I, I like it. It's clean and streamlined. Um, the, sh the size is a little off for my hand, and it gives me some problems when I hold it, but we'll get to that um, after I do the, the, the uh, comparisons and the measurements. So, here is the Stola 3. If we're looking at a few other starter pens, here is the Pilot Metropolitan, so about the same size as the Metropolitan, significantly smaller than the Lamy All-Star and the Twisby Eek, well, not significantly, but somewhat smaller than those two. And then uh, here is a Platinum 3776 and an Esterbrook J, I believe. Uh, so some comparisons there. A lot of blue pens in that, blue and silver. That was not intentional, but so be it. Uh, so there are some of those pens. And if you're looking at some of the higher end pens for comparison's sake, here's the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800. So, um, you know, it is, it is a little bit smaller of a pen, um, generally a little bit smaller than I like. Um, and, and there's a couple things about the ergonomics of this pen that make it a little weird. So, um, in terms of measurements, when capped, the pen is sitting at 134.3 milli millimeters, 134.3. Uncapped, it's a pretty short uh, 116 millimeters. So I've been trying a new grip. Instead of holding it like this, I've been trying to hold it like this. It's, uh, I believe this is called a traditional grip versus a, a modern grip. Um, if I hold it like this, it's really, it's too short, I feel. This, I can kind of get away with it as so long as I'm making sure I don't write with my fingers, but I'm writing with my whole hand the way you're, you're supposed to write. Um, I would love to be able to cap this pen. If I could cap this pen, or post this pen rather, I think that would take care of most of my complaints about the ergonomics. Unfortunately, they've added a, a, an inner cap liner here, which I like, um, but the, it's too small, so it won't post. Uh, you can kind of shove force it on, but it's not very strong. Um, it requires a lot of force to do it. And my concern with doing that is it, it could screw up the plastic inner liner, inner cap, and make this pen not close as tightly as it does, because it does close pretty nicely, um, nice and solid uh, closing, 
closing click there. So this is really not a postable pen. It just, the pen just does not sit, the cap does not sit well on the back of the barrel. And that is, in my mind, for if you like bigger pens or you have bigger hands, the inability of this pen to post is a pretty major issue. It was a pretty major issue for me. Now, if you like smaller pens, it shouldn't bother you at all. But just, uh, just know that for me, the lack of the ability to post this pen kind of threw the balance off and made it not fit quite right in my hands. Um, okay, so we've got, oh, got to take care of the rest of the measurements. Can't forget about that. We've got a 9.5 millimeter section right in the middle of the section here. Uh, and then it's 12.1 millimeters at the widest point of the pen, which is right here. And it's so for both cap and barrel, that's the widest point because they're, they are flush. And then, as I mentioned, it is an all metal pen, but it is not as heavy as you'd expect. So it is 20 grams uncapped and 31 grams capped or pseudo posted if you want to try to pseudo post this pen. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing. I'll talk you through that. And that's where I feel like this pen really shines. This is one of the better writers in this price range that I've ever used. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing and we will go from there. Okay, so this is the Pelican Stola 3. It comes with a medium steel nib. It's not a nub, it's a nib. <laughs> and uh, the ink is Pelican Edelstein. Amethyst, and a T H Y S T. I tell you what, it has been a day. Whew. One of these days, I will learn how to talk and write at the same time. But I'm I'm afraid today's probably not that day. So anyway, okay. So here we go. Here is your quote. Okay, so in terms of writing, this nib is really, really good. Um, I, I haven't had any problems with ink starvation, with uh, hard starting, skipping. It's very smooth. The tines were perfectly in alignment when it arrived. Now, I will say that sometimes, depending on how I hold the pen, it does tend to have a little bit of a, a smaller sweet spot than other pens I've tried. And it's more of an issue when I roll the pen slightly to the left. If I keep it dead on, it writes really well. Now, like a lot of Pelican's pens, this nib is ground a little bit more stubbish than other pens. Um, they, they go less round on their nibs kind of in general. Now, I don't know if this nib is is manufactured in-house for Pelican. I know Pelican does most of their nibs in-house. But this nib is more standard shaped than a lot of other nibs that come from Pelican. So if you look at, here's the, the Pelican, the Stola nib, and here is the nib for the um, 800. Now, granted, this is a much larger nib, but you, they've got the narrower shape, the narrower, longer nib with the narrower shoulders. This tends to look a little bit more like um, a and I'm going to again use air quotes, the standard nib. But then again, so does the nib on the, the Pelican M200, which is also a steel nib. Um, steel nib, it's got a little bit of a bounce to it. Not a whole lot, but you, could, you can coax a little bit out. 
One unusual thing characteristic about this nib, though, is that you'll notice up here, when I first started, it was sig it's significantly darker than it is by the time I get down here. I find that if I leave this pen sitting alone for more than about a minute or so, the first line, maybe two lines of writing, are really, really, really wet. It's like the, the feed saturates itself when you leave the pen sitting. Once you get through that initial initial thing, the ink flow is very consistent and very moderate. So it's not the wettest pen in the world, but it's also not the driest either. It's, it's really nice middle of the road combination, I find, especially for a starter pen like this, where people just want to pick up the pen and start writing. And really the only other pen that has behaved nib-wise as well as this pen for me is the Faber-Castell Loom and the Pilot Metropolitan. For the most part, I just haven't had a lot of success with the pens in this price range, especially the Lamy offerings. Their nibs have always been a little problematic for me. I think I've just had a, a run of bad luck with the nibs in general. This is really nicely smooth. On, on the uh, Matt Armstrong feedback scale, I'm going to give it about a two and a half maybe a, a three at, at the highest. There's just a little bit of feedback, so you know it's there. I'd say it's actually two to two and a half because it's pretty smooth. So it's, it's a nice smooth nib with a lot, of, a lot of really no feedback, and I'm not making a whole lot of sense. Now, in general, I've used this this pen for a few weeks now, and it's behaved beautifully. I've never had any problems with it, aside from the fact that with this skinny grip, which is very slick, and the shorter barrel, which is also really slick, there's no good place for me to hold this pen. If I get sweaty, and I tend to get slightly sweaty hands, this pen slides, sorry, bring it back in focus, slides down like this for me. And, and I, I find I have a hard time keeping it I start gripping it a little too hard because it's a little narrow here and very slippery and it doesn't feel terribly ergonomic in my hands. If you've got smaller hands, I don't think this will be a problem. And it's a great, great writer. Now, Grant, and I will say with the Pilot Metropolitan, I had the same problem because um, it's, again, a very slippery, very similarly shaped section, actually, about the same size. Um, I, and one of the reasons why I didn't love the Metropolitan is because it just did not feel ergonomic for me. But like I said, if you've got smaller hands, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, nice, really, really solid ink flow. Uh, try our reverse writing here. We've got, ooh, very nice reverse writer. Um, it's, it is probably one size smaller. But this is a pretty consistent medium for a European. It's not, you know, it, it's a little bit on the fine side of what a European medium normally comes in at, but it's not bad at all. Um, and you do have that slightly stubbish quality, so you can get just a tiny bit more character in your writing. So overall, uh, it's a very nice pen. Now, let's talk price. This pen sells for $36 in the U.S., uh, it, here in the U.S., it's, it lists for 45 and then sells for about 36 That is, I think, a very good price for, a val for value on this pen. The construction is superb. The fit and finish of everything is very, very nice and clean. Um, the manufacturers, the finish is great. It's just, it's a very nicely made pen. And it is one of the nicest nibs in this price range I've ever used. I wish it was a little larger. Um, but when you compare it to other pens in this same price range, you know, the Lamy Safari is 25 to 30 bucks and the All-Stars a little bit more. The Faber-Castell Loom is about $40. The, the Loom is probably my favorite of those three, um, simply because it has a much larger grip and it fits my hand a lot better. Um, but this is still a very nice pen overall. Now I did mention earlier, it doesn't come with a converter. I don't like that. Converters can cost you 10 cents. Throw one in there. It's not that big a deal, guys. Um, but again, the Safari and the All-Star don't come with a converter. The Faber-Castell Loom doesn't come with a converter. Now, when you compare it to something like the Pilot Metropolitan, 
This is $15. This is more than double that. They're both very good pens. I think I like the design on the Stola a little bit more than the design on the Pelican. Um, I feel like it's just got a, a little bit more class to it. I also really dislike the method of attaching the clip that they use for the, the Metropolitan, that kind of clamped in clip style, because those are often easy to pop off. This feels much more integrated and like it has a more explicit design, which I, I prefer. Um, does it justify the difference in cost? For me, yes, because I really like the nib. The nib on this, uh, the Metropolitan, is pretty well respected, a very nice nib. It's the same nib they use on the Prera and things like that. But like most Japanese pens, it is a finer nib than the, the same gauge that you'd get from European, and it has more feedback. And I tend to like my nibs smoother. So if you like your nib smoother, if you like the design of this, I would highly recommend you take a look at the Stola 3. If you've got bigger hands or sweaty hands, this may not be the right option for you, but for under $40, it's a really good pen. It writes beautifully. Um, it's got a nice, clean, modern design, uh, and it's manufactured very, very well. So I don't think you can really go too wrong with this pen. So that is my review of the Pelican Stola 3. Again, huge thank you to Goldspot Pens at goldspot.com for providing this pen for review purposes. If you have questions or comments, you can leave them down below in the comment section on YouTube or over on penhabit.com, uh, and I will do my best to respond to them. And I will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. This video is sponsored by Gold Spot Pens. Whether you're looking for a new favorite fountain pen, writing gifts for all occasions, or ink and refills to keep your pen running, visit goldspot.com for the best selection, solid customer service, and free U.S. shipping for all orders over $49. Before we get started, I want to offer a very quick thank you to our this video sponsor, Gold Spot Pens at goldspot.com. They provided the pen for today's review free of charge. Uh, okay. Take seven.